Go for the gunk shot in that thing's face. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to one more Pokemon Day, uh, double up randomized battles. I'm just having so much fun with this, it's so hard to say no. Uh, we've got a Breloom out against this Conkledor. Conkledur. <laughs> I get the, uh, Spore going with him, and I'm gonna set up a sword stance as he switches out of there. He brings in the Moltres, which is a really, really good wall against Breloom. Uh, I've got, like, Bullet Seed and Mock Punch, and there's not much that I'm going to be able to do here. So, I pull the Breloom out of there and send in the Entei, because I know he's probably coming with a fire move. Even if he comes in with the flying move, um... I would be able to resist it, but no, he goes for the Fire Blast, and I get Flash Fire, which is awesome, so I have a Choice Banded Entei in here with the Flash Fire boost, and, uh, yeah, that Flare Blitz is gonna do quite a bit of damage to Moltres, even though it's resisted, uh, and it'll chew up basically anything else on his team, unless it has, uh, complete resistance, and I think the only thing that can resist fire completely is anything with Flash Fire, um, there is no type that will uh, avoid flash fire or, or fire type moves. So yeah, he sends in the Conkleter, basically just foddering it out right there and uh, smash it with another fucking choice band flare blitz. Oh, Entei is so awesome. He is really, really slow, uh, but he puts in work. I will say that much. He sends out the Genesect now. I don't have a choice but to Flare Blitz one more time, but he goes for the extreme speed. So that Entei goes down, but not before taking two Pokemon with him, which uh, really, really imp impressive. So out comes the Stun Fist. I'm not sure what this Genesect has up its sleeve, but apparently nothing that can hit Stun Fist because he is out of there. And uh, he brings in a Ludicolo as I set up some Stealth Rocks in his face. Uh, this Stun Fist has Discharge, which might be good to get the Paralysis going. Uh, it won't be completely, completely resisted by Ludicolo since he is Water and Grass, but I decide to go for the Toxic here. Uh, he's gonna go for uh, Giga Drain, probably, something like that. So we're gonna get the Breloom in there. Uh, I think Leech Seed is what I was predicting in the moment, but he goes for a Scald, which is really, really dangerous against my Breloom. I'm not gonna be able to do much against him since I don't have the, uh, the ability to score him. And it doesn't really matter because he puts Breloom down with a fucking Ice Beam. He's got that Swift Swim going from the, from the, uh, rain for six more turns. So, uh, he's gonna be quite a threat to deal with. He's taken down a, a couple pokes of his own at this point. Uh, so here comes the Scald, but this is not a Miss Magus, it's a Zorark. Oh yes, I don't know why I did that, but um, <laughs> it seemed like the play to make. I go for the knockoff and get rid of his damp rock kind of late because the rain is already up, but it is does knock him down into poison range, which is really, really nice. I love Zorark's illusion ability. Uh, basically, taking the form of the last Pokemon in your team, so I am going to uh, get Zorark out of here with a U-turn against his Deancey, and uh, that thing is probably going to come in with some Rock or Fairy type moves, because that is its typing, so uh, I send in Stunfisk, hoping for Rock type moves, and sure enough, he goes for Diamond Storm, which uh, is going to boost its defense. It is Mega Evolved already, so this is going to be extremely, extremely hurty. And he goes for Earth Power now, which uh, does massive damage on the Stun Fist. Total misplay here. I did not know about this thing's uh, ability change on Mega Evolution. So yeah, learning new things every day. Sometimes uh, the learning hurts us. <laughs> but I'll remember that for next time. That's uh, a hard thing. <clears throat> I bring the uh, actual Miss Mages back in here and get the uh, nasty plot going. He's probably gonna hit me with something nasty. Diamond Storm, yeah, that really, really hurts. But with the nasty plot, I'm gonna be able to climb back up and over this thing. Luckily, the uh, the rain is gone now. I guess that's good because the Zorark has Flamethrower, but uh, I don't see myself needing it for much besides Genesect. Um, yeah, this, this team is pretty well cleaned out. I still haven't showed my last Pokemon, which is Noctowl, but uh, <laughs> I don't guess that matters too much. He's got the uh, Genesect out now, and I go for the Thunderbolt, hoping to get some Paralysis, but nope. He gets that attack boost um, because of his ability, and that Iron Head is going to really hurt Miss Magus. 
So uh, here comes the Zoroark again in the form of not Noctowl, it's Wormadam Sand. And uh, I don't know if he stayed in because he thought it was a Wormadam Sand or what, but I'm able to get that flamethrower in its face. Here is uh, a Star Raptor, which is quite a scary thing. And I go for the Sucker Punch, which takes a good chunk out of it. And uh, I believe he goes for Quick Attack here. Yeah, so it's going to reveal, hey, it's a Zorark, and you killed it. And Quick Attack, I think it's a banded bird. Quick Attack is not going to be enough to take down the uh, Wormadam Sand. So we will go ahead and Rock Blast that thing. Rock Gem? Power Gem? That's what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, really, really good battle. I love the ones that come down to uh, to the last poke. You know, one versus one is really, really a great feel. And uh, even though I know I have it in the bag, that uh, quick attack could have taken me out. If he went for Brave Bird or something like that, it probably could have... Uh, he probably could have won, I'll be honest. But uh, I'm really, really glad to see the battle go the way it did. And uh, I will see you in the next one, friends. Join me over there. All right, friends, another battle we've got going here. I uh, think this is the one where I had a knocked owl in reserve. I've got a superior out against his whale lord, which is a really, really good start. I go for the leaf storm right off the bat. He probably has an ice beam or something, yeah, up his sleeve. So there's uh, three quarters of my health basically from that ice beam, but I do have some leftovers. I am faster, and I'm uh, gonna get these special attack boosts going. He brings in the Gudra, which uh, is generally a Pokemon that carries Assault Vest, so uh, his special defense is through the roof. And he also has the Sap Sipper ability. Oh my god, so uh, our Leaf Storm is basically completely walled. My other ability is Hidden Power Fire, Substitute, and Glare. So uh, I set up a Substitute trying to kind of lure him out, but nope, he's probably got that Assault Vest. Goes for the Sludge Bomb. Uh, I'm just going to sack my Superior, I guess, and go for the Glare, even though it, uh, Gudra's already kind of slow. So that's not really a, a great start. He does get some para hacks right there, which is uh, a nice thing. And I could save the superior for later, but uh, I make another misplay here uh, and go for substitute when I don't have enough HP. I really thought uh, they'd just round it off, you know what I mean? Cut me a little break, but that is not the way that it goes, unfortunately. So we bring in the Arbok. Arbok definitely is one of my favorite Pokemon. He proved himself in my Nuzlocke so many times. Uh, we go for the gunk shot in that thing's face, <laughs> giggity, and uh, it gets the parahacks, which is really, really nice. Superior uh, back from the grave to wreak some revenge. I go for the gunk shot again as he switches into his Cabalion, which is not a good play at all. He's going to set up some sword dances in my face, but Arbok ain't scared of Cabalion. I'm not banded or nothing, so uh, I start going for some earthquakes hoping to scare this thing out. I'm not sure what he has. Probably a good Iron Head could really fuck Arbok up, um, but it also probably has a fighting move, which will not affect Arbok hardly at all. So he goes for a second sword stance there. I'm really, really scared, but I know that the next Earthquake is gonna KO, so I just keep going for it. He goes for Stone Edge, which uh, is not same type attack, so it's not able to KO. Arbok fucking took down the Gabalion with fucking two sword stances. <laughs> What a champ. Are you kidding me? Uh, he brings in the Starmie now. There's probably going to be a psychic attack coming my way. Nope, he goes for the Scald. Nice, uh, safe move. Fishing for burns and whatnot. But we are down one Pokemon now. So I bring in a patch of Raisu. It has a, a balloon, so it can avoid those ground attacks, but the balloon gets popped by a Scald, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I go for the U-turn there. Basically hoping for, uh, a switch or something, I probably would have gone for the Thunderbolt if I knew that he was going to stay in, but I thought he would be scared of the uh, electric type attacks. That lets me know he maybe has uh, Recover or something like that. I bring in the Sawsbuck and uh, he takes that Starmie out. <laughs> Pachiraisu doesn't scare it, but Sawsbuck does. And he brings in the Gorgice, which is able to soak, soak up my Horn Leech uh, relatively well. The Sawsbuck does have Life Orb, which is gonna cut his his uh, duration considerably, and now he's also got Will-O-Wisp. I do a dry pass here, uh, which unfortunately I should have just switched straight into Moltres. We could have avoided the burn on the Sawsbuck, so that is uh, a second misplay on my part. Not good. Not good at all. He goes for Leech Seed on my Moltres, but a Fire Blast is going to take that thing down uh, with relative ease. 
especially because again it is boosted by life orb so uh i've got yeah i've got four he's got four he brings in the porygon two, his last pokemon i'm not gonna do this leech seed shenanigan shit so i uh pull maltris out of there send back in the sawsbuck he goes for thunderbolt which is not gonna do much uh due to sawsbuck normal and grass typing and uh, even though I'm burned, I guess I'm just going to fire off some jump kicks here. I know the Gorgeist is out of the way. He doesn't have any Pokemon that are going to be able to really uh, fuck me too hard with that. And he goes for the try attack which is going to take me down into burn range. So uh, yeah, just a quarter of that Porygon 2's health. I suspect it has Eviolite, which uh, makes it quite a wall. And uh, I reveal my final Pokemon, which is a Crocodile. Where's the Noctowl? Was that a game that I'm just like, had a good time with but didn't save? That sucks. Anyways, I go for Earthquake. He goes for the Toxic. Earthquake is only doing about a quarter of his health. Uh, I do go for it again, but here he reveals that he has the Recover. So I know that this uh, Earthquake game is not the thing that I want to play, especially since I am now toxic I need to find a quick end to this game. Um, so I'm going to bring back in the, um, the Moltres hoping that he'll go for just a try attack instead of a thunderbolt and sure enough he does do just that uh hopefully no para hacks or anything like that we seem to be okay moltres goes for toxic on the porygon 2 which will cut his longevity but unfortunately uh my moltres is now completely done for so i will send in the pachiraisu now which has super fang uh who can't really hit anything hard but with super fang he'll basically cut the enemy's health in half which uh, could be a really, really nice thing, especially with toxic damage ticking away on that Porygon. And uh, my plan here is to switch into the Crocodile, who has a Choice Scarf. I see none of his Pokemon are flying or have Levitate, so if I can get one Moxie boost, I think I can plow through the rest of his team, even with toxic damage ticking away. So he sends in the Wailord now, I give it the U-turn. Um, really, I was hoping to sack the Porygon too with that U-turn, but he switches it out of there for the Whale Lord, and I see this as my opportunity to come in and uh, just wreak some havoc. I'm definitely going to get a boost off of either the Whale Lord or the Porygon 2. He does leave the Whale Lord in. There's the first attack boost, and uh, I think you know the way that this game is going from here. So even though there were some massive misplays, I definitely kept the right Pokemon uh, for the right time. It could have been taken down relatively easy, walled by Gorgeist or something like that. But uh, once Gorgeist and Cobalion were out of the way, I knew that my Crocodile would be able to pave a way to a sweep, which uh, really, really nice. And even with uh, yeah, his paralyzed ass Gudra, he did really, really good job keep stretching the longevity of his team, maximizing every uh, team member's potential. But unfortunately, the potential of my last team member was enough to come up and over him, so he forfeits now. And. Uh, yeah, I think we had a couple of good battles, a few misplays, but uh, we were able to overcome it, which is always a really, really nice thing. I hope that you've enjoyed these battles. I hope you were able to learn something, friends. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. And if you do, friends, I'll send you a can of paint. You can eat it if you want. <laughs> it's not lead-based. It won't kill you immediately or something. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye bye one, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.